Well, here we are in late August. And Tyler, tell us a little bit about where these birds were trapped and when they were released here at the research ranch. We uh, trapped from seven different ranches around the Rolling Plains and a couple places in uh, further west Texas. Brought them here and released them in late April. And we did, a, this release is, is called a soft release. We didn't just bring the birds today, dump them out and say, get after it. We did a soft release in, in what's commercially known as a surrogator. So tell us a little bit about why and, and how we did that. So we brought them and put them into these surrogators where we were able, able to uh, feed and provide water for them. We left them sequestered in there for 30 days in order to acclimate them to the new conditions here, since we were bringing them to a different ranch to release them. Also improve a little bit of social structure within the birds and um, in an attempt to kind of help them get through uh, migration of raptors and you know really just help their site fidelity. And that protecting them from raptors seems to be a big thing. We've got another study going over on the Shackleford Stevens County line with Bob Whites and that's a hard release. We capture these birds down around San Angelo, we bring them, we release them the same day and they're taking a whacking from hawks typically during the month of April. So our Objective here, one of them was, was to put them in that surrogator unit, protect them, and we want those birds alive come May 1, which is the beginning of the nesting season. And it seems to be working pretty well, hasn't it? Yes, sir. Um, all the, the hens that we translocated here, which was 40 hens, um, you know, survived to May 1 and did very well after that. Of course, we've had really nice weather during May and June this year, some of the best weather we've seen in the last seven or eight years. Give me an idea of, of how many nests you've seen out of those birds that were translocated. So we've actually had 40 nests from the translocated birds. Not all of the hens have nests, but there have been multiple second attempts, and currently there are two third attempts, uh, despite how dry it's been here lately. And what? give us a little bit of information on hatch rate, nest success. Where do they go to nest at over here? This is a different country from where they came from, so where, where are they calling home? Currently, um, there's a hatch rate of about 60% success. Um, they've nested in mainly yucca, prickly pear, and bunch grass. There've been a couple in, uh, in lope bush as well. 60%, that's way above average. So uh, at this point, again, we'll do this again, we'll study again in 2015, but at, at this point, would you consider it a success? I definitely would consider it a success. 60% uh, is very good, and there's also been broods of blue quail that we've seen that aren't collared birds. And so if we're seeing coveys of birds that weren't here before, that's, that's our main objective. This is all being done to provide data, to provide some background on whether or not trapping and translocating wild trap birds can be successful. There is a permit on the books at Parks and Wildlife called Triple T, Trap Tag and Transport. It's been available for over 10 years, but they've never granted one. And we're trying to amass the data that says, hey, look guys, this looks to be a viable and a very valuable attempt at restoring wild quail. Well, Tyler, we talked about how the birds have survived pretty well. We come out here with your telemetry equipment this morning, and it seems as though I jinxed you because when you turned it on, you got a mortality signal. So let's walk up and see if we can determine, do a little CSI work and see what might have killed this bird. Feathers. Feathers, more feathers here. <laughs> you don't find that very often, do you? No, it's somewhat rare to actually get one of your leg bands back. And here, as you can see, is our collar that came off the bird. There's quite a bit of feathers around. Based on your feather evidence and your ability to interpret the sign here, what do you, what do you think killed it? I would say that this bird was killed by a mammal, judging off how scattered the feathers are, and you can see some of these have been chewed. You can definitely tell that they've been had a lot of saliva on them. Of course, you know, hatching, uh, incubating, it's hazardous to raise a family. Any parent will attest to that. Uh, and it's no different for quail. And so this, this bird had hatched a brood. It was what, six weeks old? Approximately six weeks old and was doing fine until yesterday, and yesterday it was doing okay, and we come and check on it this morning, sometime it got whacked during the night. Probably by a coyote or a bobcat, those are our two major predators here at the quail research ranch.